When it comes to controlling your blood sugar through the food you eat, there's almost nothing more important than determining the right balance of macronutrients. What the heck are macronutrients? Macronutrients are the nutrients that your body requires in large amounts. These nutrients also provide calories, meaning energy for your body. But what exactly are macronutrients? And in which foods can they be found? And what are the best macronutrient ratios to include in your diet if you're managing diabetes? Stay tuned, because we're about to reveal everything you need to know about macronutrients and diabetes. But first, please do us a quick favor by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel. Welcome to Diabetes Smarts, your home for the latest info on how to properly manage and fight back against diabetes. Plus, stick around to discover how you can grab two free gifts. Now, let's focus in on the best macronutrients for diabetics and where to find them. There are three main macronutrients to find out in the world. And we need all three to survive. They're called macronutrients because we need to consume them in large quantities. Every macronutrient has a critical role in the body. But you might be surprised to discover that one essential macronutrient is actually fat. That's right. Like many of us, you may be trying to lose a bit of weight. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't consume fatty foods. In fact, it's absolutely pivotal that you acquire certain types of fat through your diet. While carbs tend to hog the spotlight, and as fatty foods won't directly increase blood sugar levels, they may be an afterthought for diabetics. But you still should be aware of why you need healthy fats, and where to find them. Fat has many functions in the body, including providing energy, transportation of fat-soluble vitamins, insulating and protecting internal organs, supporting cellular growth, producing and regulating hormones. The four main types of fat include saturated fat, trans fat, monounsaturated fat, and polyunsaturated fat. For the most part, experts recommend including more monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats in your diet over saturated and trans fats. While overconsuming saturated and trans fats can increase the level of unhealthy, artery clogging LDL cholesterol, appropriate amounts of mono and polyunsaturated fats help improve healthy HDL cholesterol levels within the body. Monounsaturated fats have been shown to improve the function of blood vessels and can help with blood sugar control. Some good sources of monounsaturated fats include avocado, canola oil, nuts, and olive oil. Polyunsaturated fats aid muscle movement, brain health, nerve health, and they are also essential for blood clotting. Polyunsaturated fats are also sources of beneficial omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which are linked with improved heart health. Great sources of omega-3s and omega-6s include oily fish, like salmon or sardines, walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds and flaxseed oils, eggs, and even peanut butter. Of course, research indicates that high-fat diets are associated with an increased risk for type 2 diabetes. So naturally, you'll want to be mindful about the types of fat you're eating and your portion sizes. Most doctors and dietitians recommend limiting trans fats to just 10% of your daily caloric needs per day. This is because trans fats tend to be high in bad cholesterol which can have a negative impact on your cardiovascular health, your weight, and your glucose control. Basically, you should mostly go for monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, with a smaller portion of saturated fats, and you should try to avoid trans fats as much as possible. Doctors recommend that diabetics get about 20 to 35% of their total calories from fat. But yes, fat is very high in calories. In fact, just one gram of fat contains nine calories. That's a main reason why this macronutrient is only required in small amounts. But here's a quick tip. 
An easy way to limit fats is to use cooking sprays instead of simply pouring out large amounts of oil from a bottle. But if you do prefer to get your cooking oil directly from the bottle, it's a great idea to utilize teaspoon or half teaspoon measurements. That way, you can include healthy cooking oils in your diet without overdoing your portions. So now that we've got those fats out of the way, let's get to that truly terrifying macronutrient. Carbohydrates. Sure, carbs are seen as a main culprit behind the current diabetes epidemic sweeping the world. You've probably heard blanket statements like, carbs are the problem, or carbs lead to weight gain and diabetes. So let's get to the bottom of the carbohydrate conundrum once and for all. First, let it be known that not all carbs are quote unquote bad. But yes, carbohydrates are more likely than fat to spike your blood sugar levels. Why? You're most likely already aware that carbohydrates get broken down into glucose inside our body. Glucose, also known as blood sugar, moves through your blood vessels to be utilized as a source of energy for your muscle cells. But excessive amounts of glucose, over time, can cause damage to your eyes and your limbs. They can also lead to your muscle cells becoming increasingly insulin resistant. This, in turn, can lead to higher quantities of glucose in your bloodstream. But carbohydrates can also cause immediate damage as certain simple sugars found within white breads, white rice, and sugary junk foods can significantly spike your post-meal blood sugar levels. Of course, this is a main danger for those suffering from type 1 or type 2 diabetes. But a lot of this comes down to your choice of carbs as well as the other foods on your plate. So what are the types of carbohydrate-rich foods that you can and should eat? And what should you look for within these foods? In a word, fiber. Whole grain products are an excellent source of insoluble and soluble fiber. Soluble fiber slows the absorption of sugar and helps prevent those problematic glucose spikes. Insoluble fiber aids bowel health and helps to bulk up your stool. It's also been shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Both forms of fiber can help with long-term blood sugar regulation improve heart health, lower the risk of certain forms of cancer, and aid with weight loss. So it's critical to choose complex carbohydrates with a good amount of fiber, like 100% whole wheat breads and cruciferous vegetables, rather than simple carb options like white breads and potato chips. At the same time, there's plenty of evidence to suggest that cutting back on the carbs can help you better manage diabetes. A recent study revealed that participants who reduced their carbohydrate intake to about 21 grams per day had lower blood sugar levels, and they increased their insulin sensitivity by up to 75% after just two weeks. That's why many doctors now recommend that diabetics limit their carb intake to 20 to 50 grams per day. That equates to just 10 to 20% of your daily caloric intake. And yet, other experts still recommend getting 20 to 30 percent, or possibly up to 40 percent of your daily calories from carbohydrates, even if you're diabetic. At the end of the day, it all comes down to finding what works best for you and your body. But the carbohydrate-rich foods you'll probably want to avoid include white breads, muffins, dinner rolls, and other baked goods, pasta, rice and corn, chips, crackers, and pretzels plus sodas, fruit juices, sweetened iced teas, and alcoholic beverages, especially beer. By now, you've most likely heard of the glycemic index scale, which ranks foods from 0 to 100 based on how much and how quickly they may raise your blood sugar levels. If you're looking for healthy sources of carbs with low GI scores, why not try soy products, beans, fresh whole fruits, dairy products, vegetables, and whole grain breads. Now, before we move on to the last, and quite possibly the most important macronutrient for diabetics, let's get you your two free gifts. Uncover all the best nutrition-packed foods for fighting diabetes in our free ebook, Superfoods for Diabetics. Plus, gain tons more info and exclusive insights about diabetes and your health from leading medical experts in episode one of that diabetes documentary. You won't want to miss out on either. 
So grab both right now simply by clicking the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at the best macronutrient for diabetics. Protein. So, why does protein take today's top slot? Well, for starters, this macronutrient does not drastically spike blood sugar levels. In fact, it can help your body avoid high glucose levels. How? Much like fiber, protein helps slow absorption of the foods you eat and also provides feelings of fullness. This means that it's a great macronutrient to pair together with carbs. It also means that it can help you to avoid overeating at dinner time as well as helping to keep you away from those unhealthy in-between meal snacks. Studies even show that a low-carb, high-protein diet can reduce long-term fasting glucose levels. Plus, protein is essential to your body for a variety of functions. It's a basic building block for your muscles, bones, nails, and skin. Protein is also used to repair damaged body tissues. It's utilized by red blood cells to transport oxygen and nutrients throughout the body. Protein is also used to create digestive enzymes and is vital for hormone regulation. Generally, it's recommended that most adults consume about 0.36 grams of protein per pound of body weight. That's about 10 to 35% of your daily calories. And for the average sized man, it equates to approximately 56 grams of protein per day. For the average woman, it equals about 46 grams of protein per day. But just like carbs, it's also critical to choose your protein wisely. Some types of protein can contain large quantities of saturated fat, which may increase your risk of heart disease. So while a little saturated fat can be beneficial, you'll probably want to avoid overeating certain protein-rich foods, such as butter, bacon, and other processed meats especially deli cold cuts. If you're an omnivore, don't worry. When it comes to healthy meat-based protein choices, you still have plenty of options. Go for lean meats, which will contain less than 4.5 grams of saturated fat per 100 gram serving. Some excellent lean meat choices include oily fish, like salmon and tuna, eggs, skinless chicken, turkey, and grass-fed beef. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, there's still a wide array of healthy plant-based protein options to choose from, including beans and legumes, nuts and seeds, and soy products like tofu. However, before you stock up on turkey or beans, here's one quick note. Overconsumption of protein may lead to kidney damage for diabetics. This form of diabetic neuropathy has been reported to impact about 40% of individuals with diabetes. Therefore, if you are managing chronic high blood sugar, you probably need to keep a close eye on your protein intake. At the end of the day, the type and quantity of each macronutrient you should include in your diet all comes down to balance. And each person's body is different, so what works for one person may not be right for you. Therefore, if you're concerned or unsure about how much of each macronutrient you should eat, Talk to your doctor to determine what's best for you and your health. So there you have it. Now you know why each macronutrient is essential for your body and your blood sugar control. But what do you think about protein, carbs, and fat? Let us know your favorite macronutrient foods by commenting below. And don't forget about your two free gifts. Plus, make sure to like this vid and subscribe to our channel. We are Diabetes Smarts your go-to source for the latest and greatest diabetes fighting info. Thanks for watching. We sure hope you're having a happy and healthy day.